Hello, this time I want to do some practices related to regular expressions and um, also some more complicated program, programming examples. Um, so we'll just go through these starting in the top left up here. Um, which of these regular expressions will not match the string uh, 1, 2, 3? So if I'm looking at these, slash d means um, a number, a digit. And so a digit, digit, digit. That will absolutely match this. Um, when I put uh, put squiggly braces and a number inside of it, that just means the thing in front of it repeats this number of times. So this will do exactly the same thing as above. So both of these so far are, are matching just fine. Um, let, let's jump down to the last one. This one says dot, dot, dot. Remember that dot matches anything except a new line. So that's even more general, right? I mean, that could match something like ABC. And so the final answer, the only one that I won't match, is when I have capital D's. And relative to the lowercase d, so lowercase d is the meta character for digits, and then uppercase d is the opposite of that, it's non-digits. Okay, so let's head down to this next one. So here's my pattern. Oh, excuse me. So here's my pattern, and I want to know which of these will match this time. And so the first key is for this character here, this little hat character. That means different things at different times. Um, if it were inside of brackets, then it would mean not. Uh, when it's at the front of it, when it's outside of any brackets, that means it's an anchor, and that means anchor to the beginning um, of the string. And so basically what we're looking for is any string that begins with A, right? And so the only one that begins with A is this one right here. Right? If I had wanted to match something like this, then I would have had to put a backslash in front of that character to indicate that I'm literally looking for um, that little hat character. Uh, but I didn't do that, so this is the only one it matches right here. Okay, so which one of the following regular expressions can match with this string? It's kind of opposite, right? I mean, I've been putting, um, I, I've been putting uh, this one, right? I had my regular expression down here. Here I have a bunch of regular expressions. And so, well, let's take a peek at this. So, does the first one work? <clears throat> Remember that plus means plus means one or more. And so there's no A's in there, so that one's out right away. Um, what about this one? So actually, plus plus question mark also means excuse me, plus question mark also means one or more. And uh, the difference between these is when we have a choice. So this one down here, we prefer more. Let me draw a line in between here. This is preferring more, or I'm sorry, this is preferring less. And up here, I'm preferring more. But, you know, whether I'm preferring less or more, it's still at least one, right? So neither of these is going to work for me. So I'm going to cross this off too. And notice this is a little bit different, right? Um, here I don't have plus question mark. It's actually this inside of parentheses, so it's a separate thing. So inside of the parentheses, I'm saying I'm looking for one or more A's. And then after the parentheses, I'm saying the thing right before it is optional, right? So this whole thing here is optional. Um, I could skip it if I want, right? I could have zero or one of these. And, and so then this one absolutely will match just uh, HH. Okay, up here to the top right, uh, which string will match this right here? Okay, and, and so again, like this one over here, right, that, that little hat is not inside of brackets. So it doesn't mean not, it means anchor. And, and so what does this mean? This means I have to start at the beginning of the string. This means I have to go to, sorry, the dollar sign means I have to anchor at the end of the string. And then, well, what does star mean? Star means zero or more. So the whole string has to consist of zero or more ha's. And, and so let me cross some of these off right away. Um, this one is off because uh, the case is wrong. This one is off because it's not beginning with ha. Um, this one up here is off because I have a hanging h, right? It, um, it would be fine if I didn't have this dollar at the end, right? Then it would just kind of match what it could from the beginning. But I say that at the end of the match, it has to be at the end of the string. And, uh, and that one's not, so that one's out too. And so when I'm looking at this, well, 
star means zero or more. So I guess I'll go with zero. So zero has, and then the beginning and end of the string. And so that absolutely will match just the empty string like so. Okay, what is the type of the following? So I'm, I'm calling find all, and, um, and I'm looking at some sort of string for some pattern. And then that's going to return something, and then I'm indexing into it. I'm pulling out the item at position zero. So find all always returns a list. And depending on what my pattern is, the types of the entries in my list might be different. Um, what really matters is how many groups I'm looking for. When I put these parentheses in it, then that means I'm looking for two groups, right? So that means each, each match I find has to be represented by a tuple, right? And that tuple will have these two pieces, right? So, so in this case, since I have the two groups, I'm going to be returning a list of, of tuples. And, and so if I have a list of tuples and I pull out the position at zero, well, no surprise, I'm going to get a tuple. What, what if I had had only one group in here, right? Maybe I only had one pair of parentheses or none. In that case, find all would be returning a list of strings, and this would have been string, but that's not the case since I have two groups. Okay, so let's look at this one down here. What will the following substitution do? So this is a string I'm operating on, and what am I trying to match? I'm trying to match this piece here, so three digits, and then a dash, and then three digits dash four digits. That's what I'm looking for. And I absolutely do that, right? So I'm gonna grab this as a group, and then this is a group here, right? Do you see my two groups? These are a group, and then these are a group, right? That's group one and two. And so then when I'm replacing it with this, I'm saying I want parentheses, group one, parentheses, space, and then group two. So, so maybe to write it out exactly, what would I get? Well, it's a string, and I have parentheses, and then group one, and parentheses, and then space, and then group two, right? And then so I'd have one, two, three, dash, four, five, six, seven would be my, uh, would be my entire thing, right? So, so I can very easily do things like reformatting a phone number, right? I mean, sometimes this is a more common pattern than this up here, and we could consistently do that to all of them. And if I had a long document with a lot of phone numbers in it, then this little piece of code uh, would be replacing all of them, and it would be great. Okay, so let me head over here, and, um, and I want to do a real example now. And, and so I'm going to head over to the website, and... Um, uh, it makes for such a nice example, even though I'm doing something that uh, maybe feels a little bit wrong. So I don't do this in general. But, uh, you know, there's all these people who are trying to um, scrape email addresses off of websites for spammy purposes. And, um, and because I know there's people out there like that, I'm trying to make their job a little bit harder by formatting my, um, my email addresses like this. I'm not using an actual at character. Okay, and so that makes their life harder. Not impossible though, I'm actually gonna write a regular expression that can deal with this. It can actually find what's going on. And, and so maybe let me just grab all of this up here and I'm gonna head over to this demo and I'm gonna say, well, this is my string. And, um, and because I want it to be a multi-line string, I have to put triple quotes. So I'm gonna do that. And you know, you just print S here, that works fine. And so what I want to do is I want to try to write some code that's trying to pull out these um, email addresses for me, okay? So let's think about how we can do this. I mean, there's several parts to an email address. Um, one is I have something like .edu um, or maybe .com or .org. And then I also have this ad in the middle. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import, maybe actually I should do that up at the top, import re. And then down here, I'm going to say re.findall, and then I have a pattern, and then I have my uh, text, which in this case is just s. Okay, so, so my pattern, I guess there could be uh, multiple patterns, right? Maybe one pattern that I'm going to look for is the suffix. And so maybe like the suffix is something like um, .edu. And, and so maybe let me look for that suffix pattern. And you can see I'm finding four of them, right, for the four email addresses there. 
Um, and, and, and one, one thing that is a little bit weird, right, is if maybe I should add some stuff up there. Um, uh, you know, if I had something that was not this, right, if I had something that was not a period in front of it, um, uh, I don't know, um, I'll say like um, nine, uh, then it's trying to match that as well, right? Because dot down here means match everything. And so what I should really do is I should escape that. I don't want to get this weird thing here. I just want to get actual endings. Um, other things I should do is like, let's say one of these is like dot com. Um, I would like to, you know, let me, let me kind of combine all of this up here because I, I feel like I have to keep rerunning the same cell. Um, I would like it to still match that, right? And, and so what I'd like to do is I'd like to match different endings. And, and the way I can do that um, is something similar to a character class. I mean, we saw it before if I do this, I'm matching the characters A, B, or C. Um, here I want to match different things, but not necessarily a, just a single character. And, and so the way I can um, basically say or in a regular expression is with a vertical bar like this. This means or. And so I can say edu or com or org or something like that. And, and now I can basically catch all of these, right? And, um, and actually I should make this uh, like that. So uh, to just be very careful, right? To make sure it's not matching something um, more general, right? Okay, um, good. So, uh, so I'm kind of capturing all those things. And um, now what I wanna do is I wanna capture uh, these pieces here, right? So I may say at equals another regular expression. And, um, and there's a couple ways I could do this, right? I mean, I could say A or A uh, followed by T or T. Um, and, uh, and well, what else? I mean, I guess I could also say, well, I might have that at character. So maybe I say something like this. Uh, maybe I'll put this all in parentheses. Um, can I find the, the letter um, at? like so and i can i'm finding it in all of these various forms maybe i'm just going to change one of these um to say like you know test at gmail.com i should i should be catching all of these and uh, and you can see i am right i'm catching um all these different emails in all these different forms okay um what next um there, there's more i have to do i have to grab something here I have to worry about these uh, brackets. I have to worry about this word over here. And, um, and so maybe what I'll do is I'll say something like, well, let's find the brackets in there. I'm gonna say brackets um, is a regular expression and it's a set of characters. Um, and uh, the set of characters could be, you know, parentheses, curly braces or brackets. And I'm just gonna escape all of these just so that there's no confusion, right? These characters all have special meaning um, in regular expression. So I'm, so I'm going to do that. And so I'm going to say brackets like that. And, um, and I can see, well, I'm, I'm finding all these different brackets inside, right? So lots of good things that I'm doing so far. Um, now what I think I can do is I can try to put it all together. So, so what is an email address? An email address is something like this. It's something like, um, some word characters some number of word characters, like, you know, um, you know, letters or numbers or things like that. And, um, and then after that, it's maybe optionally some spaces, right? So I may say, uh, do I have some spaces? Maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, I could have a lot of spaces. I could have one space, right? Slash S is that. I need to have at least one letter for the email address, but I may or may not have any spaces, right? I may have that. And um, and then I'm going to have what? I, I can actually glue these regular expressions together, right? After that, I can have some brackets. And after I have some brackets, I have um, an at, right? I have uh, some sort of at symbol. And after that, maybe I have some more brackets. And, uh, and then finally, I'm going to have a suffix. So I'm going to do that. And, uh, and what do I get? Um, well, nothing unless I actually uh, say that that's what I'm searching for, right? So I'm gonna say email like that. And well, what did I find? I guess nothing, right? Um, so in this case, I guess I bit off more than I could chew. And so maybe what I should do is I should just kind of go a piece at a time, right? Can I find this? Um, 
Yes, I can, right? I can find a bunch of stuff there. Can I find a word followed by a bracket? Yes, I can find a bunch of words followed by brackets. What about uh, brackets followed by an at symbol? No, I can't. So, oh, sorry, there. Words followed by a at symbol. Uh, that I can do. And, and you actually see my problem here? Um, why is it only showing me the at symbol? Um, the reason is that when I did this find all down here, um, it, there's only one group, right? Just considering what is ever is inside of my parentheses to be the group I'm looking for. And, and so to kind of make the whole thing a group, what I should really do is I should have um, a parenthesis, parentheses around this to make the whole thing a group, one big group. And so I do that. And now I'm, I'm maybe getting these tuples, right? But at least the tuples are showing me the pieces that, that I'm interested in, right? So I'm going to do that. And then what else do I want to do here? So that was part of my debugging. I wonder if that was the whole thing. So let's, let's try to keep going piece by piece. Um, that was still good. I'm still getting my matches. And, and what about when I have my suffix? That's where I run out. So, so why can't I have my suffix? that comes right after brackets. And, and I guess the reason why is that I'm missing this word here and I'm missing this space, right? So, so I guess I should really say, what else do I have here? I have some other pieces. Um, I have some uh, spaces, possibly, right? Some number of spaces or, or none. And then I also have, uh, have a word there. I'm gonna do that. And now I can actually see I'm pulling out these pieces that I'm interested in, right? And so this is all good. I'm pulling out the emails that I had up here. Um, why am I not getting test at gmail.com? That's kind of interesting, actually. Um, let me think about that. Let me, let me kind of do the same thing again, right? Oh, what's wrong there? Oh, not even there, right? So even uh, the brackets are no good. And, um, and and you see my problem, right? The I didn't make the brackets optional, did I? So maybe I'm gonna call these like optional brackets. And I'm gonna put a parenthesis after them. All right, so I'm gonna say optional brackets. Like so, we're gonna have some more optional brackets there. And um, and now I'm actually capturing all of the all of the email addresses, right? And um, and so like the one more piece I want to do here is I want to be able to get the actual email address out. And, um, and so what does that mean? I want this piece down here and I want this piece and, um, and then I want to have, uh, actually that's all I want to have my, you know, the name and then like the website and then I can add the at myself later. So, so really what I should do is I should put parentheses around here, right? That's going to be useful for me. And, um, and then at the end, I want everything around from these words uh, plus the suffix. Maybe, maybe I'll just keep the suffix separate because I already have that. And so I'm going to match all that, all that. And now you can see I'm pulling out an email from each of these, right? I have something like test at gmail.com, right? I can pull out all of these, um, these email addresses. And, and of course, I'm going to ignore this at because it's not really what I was uh, looking for, right? I was um I was gonna kind of put that in myself my own way. Okay, so I'm doing pretty good now. Let, let me loop over these. I'm gonna say something like for uh, matches for maybe match and in, in this. Um, what do I want to say? I want to print. Let me be a little careful here. Um, I I have the match at position one, right? So I'm gonna say match one plus at and um, and then what else do I want? I want these two pieces back here, right? So this is position one, position two, position three, at match three. Let me just try that for a moment. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And then I think I also wanted the match at uh, part four, right? Let me just print the whole thing, right? So here I have my matches and I wanted um, dot and then com, right? So I'm gonna say plus dot plus match four. And um, and now I'm kind of pulling out people's email addresses and maybe I'll just delete this. That's a complete example. And, uh, 
maybe I don't even need this here for now. I can just do that. And so you can see, even though I have this weird messy string with all these emails and all these different uh, ways, it would actually be very easy to write a little piece of code that pulls all of those out and uh, well, hopefully not spamming people, but uh, I mean, this is what people do. So be careful with your email addresses. Um, you can see that I did some new strategies here, right? Instead of just writing one massive regular expression, I broke it down. I thought about the different things that I needed to match. And then when I created my big one, I had it like this. And I, I admit regular expressions are always this horrible mess to look at, but at least by breaking it down into these variables, you have some sort of hope of, of trying to figure out what, what it's trying to do. Um, all right, so I'll leave it off there.